Minimum Equipment List, MEL. The MEL is provided for use prior to departure to ascertain whether or not an aircraft may be dispatched. You should make yourself 100% familiar with its applicability, layout, and content. It uses the standard ATA classification system, the same system that is used throughout the whole Airbus documentation. For example, the power plant is at a Chapter 70 in FCOM thus a problem with the FADEC can be found in the MEL under Chapter 00-70. These references provide a quick method of referring to a particular item under discussion or investigation and are widely used in discussions with engineers and also in tech log references to unserviceable items. The MEL reference is quoted to allow rapid access to any limitations or procedures that may exist and to enable a universal understanding of a problem. Legally the MEL is only applicable as long as the aircraft is at the gate without the engine started. As soon as we initiate the engine start, legally, we only have to follow standard procedures, for example, ECAM or QRH, to handle any malfunctions. In real life, however, it is good airmanship to use your MEL as a reference document in all cases. It will provide you with very good extra information regarding the failure you just suffered. For example, you have a flight controls, spoiler 3 fault on taxi out. This is a straightforward ECAM procedure with very few possible resets so, in theory, you could depart with it. The MEL however says that dispatch is only allowed after a maintenance action securing the faulty spoiler. In this case, as a good captain, you should contact MCC and return to a gate for maintenance action. In the same philosophy, the MEL can provide you, in case of any in-flight failure, with a better idea of whether it is better to return to your home port or to continue the flight. Special procedures for operations outside the conditions of the MEL exist. Not surprisingly this is a little used procedure that exists to allow you to get an aircraft home in exceptional circumstances. This procedure can only be initiated by the captain of the aircraft concerned and is usually done in coordination with MCC and the company. It is worth stating that the MEL needs to be read and considered very carefully and in full before making a decision. A second or third opinion is often useful. Get the first officer to read it also and make sure that you both understand the requirements. If one is available then an engineer's view of the MEL is always worthwhile. Conclusion We hope you found the Command Upgrade Handbook both interesting and instructional. Those older and more experienced, who may have had a command elsewhere, may view some of the contents as old hat in which case you will slash should treat the information herein as valuable refresher training. The less experienced amongst you have perhaps had your eyes opened a little toward the differences in responsibility and role between the occupant of the left and right hand seats. None of you, regardless of experience level, should allow yourselves to be overwhelmed by the apparent scale of the task that appears to be the captain's burden. You do not need to be either Superman or Einstein to be a good captain on an airplane. The necessary attributes include a conscientious and considered approach to the job and the ability to lead from the front, no pun intended. Successful captains are those who are prepared to think their way through problems, but are not too proud to seek assistance from their peers, they are good communicators. This means listening as well as talking and above all they never, ever stop learning and never, ever cease to strive to improve their standards and those of their colleagues. The knowledge gained during your recent studies will serve as a solid grounding for your future career. Furthermore, it will enable you and your training captain to concentrate on the practicalities of decision-making on the line during your forthcoming line training. Good luck!